praise God. I want to remind you tonight that um, this is available to you every single day. We have a broadcast on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, at 2 p.m. every day. Uh, as this continues, as we continue to make this available to you, we may also have a broadcast at 10 a.m. Uh, and there will be special times, special broadcasts, where we will do uh, other times. But right now, the schedule is this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Thursday, Friday, 7 p.m. Saturday, is there's no broadcast. Sunday, 10.45 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. is our regular church service at Guthrie Church of Faith. And we do stream every service that we have. So it's available for you at home to watch and participate in our services. So I tell you all of that because I want you to realize that we make that available to you free of charge, of course. The gospel is free. Freely you've received. Freely give. Amen. However, it does cost money in order for us to do this. Uh, we, we do have a monthly fee that we pay for our internet. Of course, our equipment costs money. I receive a salary for being here. Uh, the church has heating and air and, and lights just like your house does. And so there are bills that, that need to be paid. I'm not saying that to manipulate you. I'm not saying that we're not going to do it if you don't give. We're going to continue doing it because God said to do it, period. However, if you would like to be a part of that, if you would like to receive a blessing from the Lord, if you'd like to be a part of what God is doing here and say, hey, I like what I hear, I like what's going on there, and I want to be a part. I want it to be on my account as well. The things that are happening in Guthrie, I want it to be added to my account. If you would like that and you'd like to give into this ministry, you have the opportunity to do that. You can go to our website, www.guthriechurchoffaith.org. Click on the donations link, and you can give by credit card to our church, or you're welcome to send a check or money order to our address, or come here in person would be wonderful. We'd love to see your face, and we'd love to get to know you. We are at 323 East Harrison Avenue in Guthrie, Oklahoma, and we're here every day of the week. Someone is here. Typically, it's me. Uh, but there are others that are here at different times. And, of course, on Sunday and Wednesday, we have our church services, 1045 and 6 p.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. Wednesday night. And uh, we'd love for you to be a part of that. And, we'd again, we'd love to get to know you. However, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about the operations of God and the administration of God. Because, see, we've been talking about spiritual gifts, how they function, how they, what they are, first of all. We really kind of uh, explained a little bit of what each one of those gifts are, the nine gifts of the Spirit that are uh, outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But, and we talked a little bit about how they function, that we're, if we're going to see these gifts function, we're going to have to operate as a body and recognize that those gifts are important, that each one has its place and its function within the body of Christ. And so, tonight, we're going to talk about the operations of God... Uh, we, we talked a little bit about ministry gifts. If you'll remember in Ephesians chapter 4, that Jesus gave gifts unto men, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And we said that those were placed in the body for a specific purpose, for us to be mature in the Lord to so that we won't be tossed to and fro, that we won't be uh, like little children and and tossed by every wind of doctrine, but we'd be established in Him. we grow up in maturity to the fullness of Jesus Christ. Now, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks again about some of these gifts. We're going to start in the 27th verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says this, Now, you are the body of Christ and members individually. 
God has appointed these in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings. Helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. He goes on to say, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gift of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Okay, so here in verse 28, he outlines these things that God has appointed in the church. He tells us that we're a body, and that each one of us are members. And now, not all of us are going to function in all of these things. That's what he said. Are all apostles? Obviously not. We can't be. We're not all prophets or teachers or workers of miracles, gifts of healings, and so forth. However... We do all fit somewhere in these administrations. No matter what you your calling is, it's going to fit somewhere in these administrations. You're either going to have the calling of an apostle, which would be one who establishes tur- churches and establishes doctrine and helps to uh, administrate and set up the, the local church. Prophets who, who speak forth the Word of God in due season. They bring out um, what God is doing in the mind of Christ for a particular body, a particular group within the body of Christ, or sometimes it's for the entire body for that, that we need to hear and, and, and what God is saying. Third, teachers. Of course, we know what teachers are, but, you know, we think, some people think they know what teachers are, but really that gift is many times overlooked in the body of Christ. Many churches that you'll go to, they'll basically either allow you, if you want to be in the ministry, you're either going to be a pastor or you're going to be an evangelist because they don't understand these other gifts and how they function and how they operate in the body. But the teacher is a gift unto itself. Some people don't recognize that, but there are teachers in the body of Christ and they can teach the Word of God. They can break it down to a, a level where we understand it and we can't misunderstand what they're saying and it, it, it brings life to the Scriptures. An excellent example of that is a, a, a wonderful teacher in the body of Christ is Rick Renner. He can teach and break down the meanings of words and understanding how they function in the Word of God and how those things are to be applied to our life and help us to understand the Word so much better that there are things that you might have thought about before and you thought it was a certain way, but when, it, when the gift of the teacher manifests that the Holy Spirit is able to bring out the truth in the Word of God and set you free from false doctrines. That gift is very, very important in the body of Christ. And it doesn't just mean that you know how to teach a Sunday school class. It doesn't mean that you just know how to teach a Bible study. It is a gifting and an anointing upon a person that allows you to break down the Word of God and bring forth the truth that the Holy Spirit wants you to have that's sometimes hidden from many of us. And it takes that gift of the teacher to bring that out to where we go, wow, that's what that means. It doesn't mean you can't get it on your own. It just means this is a gift that is to help you to get that and to grab a hold of that and to, to um, bring forth truth in your life. It says, after that, miracles. Now, here's what's interesting. In Ephesians, it says apostles, prophets, pastors, no, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Here he says apostles, prophets, teachers. Then he says miracles, gifts of healings. So he left out pastors and evangelists. And I don't think it's by accident. Because you see, an evangelist ought to be qualified 
by the gifts of miracles, workings of miracles in his life. An evangelist should flow in that gifting, and you should see miracles taking place in his life and in his ministry, and that causes people to come unto the Lord. An excellent example would be Benny Hinn. The man, when he goes to have a crusade, miracles happen. Miracles happen. Why? Because that's the calling that's on his life. That's the gifting that's on his life. He works in the working of miracles. And because of that, many people come to the Lord. He's an evangelist. It stirs up faith in, in the church and it causes the unsaved to come in. It stirs up faith in those who are saved. In you and I, when man, when I watch a, a, a Benny Hinn crusade, I get excited. Because I see how God is working and moving and it, it, it's an exciting thing. Then he says, gifts of healings. Well, if you're a pastor, the gifts of healings ought to be manifesting in your life. Because, in, in, and if you'll notice here, both of those words are plural, both gifts and healings. Because there are, there's more than just one type of healing that has to take place. We have physical healings, we have emotional healings, we have mental healings, we have spiritual healings. And, and people come in with those problems. And as a pastor, we need to be able to, to administer those gifts of healings to them by the Spirit of God. They should be receiving that to, to, to heal the wounds that are in their life. Like a shepherd puts the salve and the ointment on the sheep. That ought to be functioning in the life of a pastor. We talked about earlier that these gifts don't belong to the person. They don't belong to you or to I. They belong to the Holy Spirit. But they should be functioning in the lives of these men of God who are called to these offices. Or women of God who are called to these offices. But he goes on from there and he says, then there's gifts of, uh, then he says, helps administrations, and varieties of tongues. If you don't fit in that first five-fold ministry, that doesn't mean you're not called to the ministry. Each one of us is called to serve in the ministry in some capacity. So you may be called to the ministry of helps. Now that's been misunderstood many times too because they'll say, well, if you're called to helps, that must just mean you don't fit anywhere else or you're just supposed to help out. No, there is an administration of helps, and in the in the original language there, it talks about a person of means. So one area, the ministry of helps, you can find it in Romans chapter 12. It says, let him who give, give with simplicity. You may be called to give money into the gospel, to help get the gospel out. So you'll be called to, you may work a regular secular job, but that's not your calling. Your calling is to receive money to give into the gospel. God will use whatever means. He may gift you with a, a, a brilliant business mind so that you can receive those funds, but it's so that the gospel can go forth. Doesn't mean He doesn't want you to have money and nice things, but the, but, but the purpose for that is to give into the gospel, to help the ministry. And there's, of course, other areas of helps, behind the scenes workers and people who handle the, the uh, um, sound systems and different things. Those are all ministries of helps. And then it goes on to administrations. Uh, in the King James, it calls this governments. And we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. And then the last one is varieties of tongues. And we'll definitely get into that. We'll probably have several uh, sessions about tongues because. That's very important. And you need to understand that in order for you to get in, really, tongues is the entry-level gifting to functioning in the administrations of God. What I mean is when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the first thing you're able to do is you are able to speak with tongues. And you can pray in those other tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost, and you'll be building yourself up on your most holy faith and building an edifice in the Spirit, a structure, that God is developing for you to function in. You want to know your calling? You want to know what God has for you? You want to understand where you fit in those places? When you begin to pray in other tongues, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith that you might be able to understand what administration God has called you to. What functionality in there that He has for you to do. You find that place by spending time getting to know the Holy Ghost and the best way to do that is to allow Him to to pray for you in other tongues. Amen? 
So I hope that you received something from this broadcast today. I, I pray that it was a blessing to you. And um, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. In the meantime, go with God. Be blessed. Allow the Holy Spirit to pray for you by, by yielding yourself over to Him and praying in other tongues. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.